All right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let me uh, ask you guys a couple of quick questions. Ready? And I'm going to actually allow you to unmute yourself to uh, give me the answers. You guys ready for that? Yes or no? All right, perfect. Let me go to the participant list. Mute all and allow participants to unmute themselves. Okay, let's get with a quick, with a quick warm up round. Salam. Wa alaikum salam. Warm up round. <laughs> so here's how it's gonna work. All right, you can type the answer or say the answer. Okay. You with me? Ooh. Type it or say it, and I am going to give you like a. Like I'm gonna give a countdown, okay? And based on my countdown, I'll tell you what you have to say. Understood? Yeah. Understood. All right, okay. Is it true or false questions? Ready? Can <laughs> Yeah, I don't need you to say right now. I think right now, the angels existed, uh, or were created by Allah before Adam. True or false? True. 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 Right. Those who say true, why do you say true? Why somebody tell me the answer? Why do they say true? Because um, the angels they asked. Why God created humans? Mm. So obviously they were there before. Excellent. This is Zainab. Yeah. How's it going, Zainab? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you. Great answer. The angels in the ayah from the Quran, the angels asked Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They were like, "Hey, qalu atajalu fiha, man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima." Are you going to place someone on earth who is going to cause corruption on the land and uh, is going to shed blood? So clearly the angels were, were in existence before Adam <laughs> was created. Okay. The earth was created by Allah uh, before Adam was created. True or false? True. 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 True as well. Okay. All right. True. Next question. Uh, Adam alayhi salam hmm, uh, was uh, created, uh, say like miraculously, uh, by Allah. Uh, true or false? True. What do you mean by miraculously? So. I think it's true. All right, good question. So miraculously, I mean, what I mean by that is it wasn't a natural process of how true. You know, human beings are born. True. Hmm? True. 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 Uh, e, not a natural uh, process. Okay. Yep. All right, very good. That is actually true. That is correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam in his, uh, you know, uh, as, as, um, as, as an adult. You know, he didn't created him as a baby and he grew into an adult. He was made into an, adult. an adult. Okay. Uh, Adam salam, was created by Allah from a handful of dirt that he took from the yeah. entire earth. True or false? True. 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 That was also true. Hmm? That was also true. This is something, there's a hadith of the Prophet, uh, I, I shared that with you last time. Uh, the hadith of the Prophet which says that uh, he created Adam from dirt. Uh, a handful of dirt that he grabbed from uh, the entirety of the earth. And that was the explanation of the diversity. Of the humans. Okay. Allah created the soul of Adam before his body. True or false? False. False. Allah created the soul of Adam before his body. False. 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 
people saying we have have people saying false. Uh, why some people who saying true? Why why would you say true? Uh, so let's see. We have Adila saying true. Yeah, why would you say that? Not. No thoughts. Can I say why it's false? Uh, well, uh, it, I think you said it's true, right? Why would you say it's true? I didn't say it's true. I said it's false. Oh, you said false? Okay, my bad. All right. Uh, the answer is false. Allah made his body. And then he blew the soul into the body of Adam. And that's when he became uh, a human. Okay, so. Allah created our souls before our bodies. True or false? True. 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 Okay, how many people say, uh, how many people say false? false. We have one, two, a few people say false. Okay, uh, why would you say false? Because uh, the fetus was made before the, the soul. The fetus the was made before the soul, okay. Uh, all right, any other uh, thoughts? All right, I'm gonna ask uh, somebody else. Why do you say true? Let's see. Uh, who would like to answer? Why is it true, this question? Fetus is made and the soul is put in it. Okay, I like that. Marwa, well done. That's a good answer. But then do you remember I showed you this ayah from the Quran? Do you remember this ayah? This book is... Our souls was made before our bodies were made, okay? In fact, our souls, all of our souls, huh, were in existence before our bodies were in existence. Then when we are conceived in the wombs of our mothers, hmm, that is when our soul is blown into our bodies and thus we become humans. Hmm? Do you remember that, people? Yeah. All right, very good. Okay, um, so that actually, Allah created our soul before our bodies. That is actually true. Uh, great job. All right. Last question. Okay. Uh, is that on the day of judgment, uh, we will be uh, resurrected in in spirit, meaning like, i.e. In, in our souls will be resurrected. Not our bodies. True. True. That we would be True. all like in human part. Like we we're not gonna have this. True. True. True or false? True. True. False. 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 Right. There's a people. There's a bunch of people are saying true. Uh, the people who say true. Body come back. Somebody, uh, tell me why do you say it's true? Sorry, I'm not listening. I'm kind of. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm, I'm gonna ask actually everybody to mute themselves for a minute and then the one who says true respond to me, okay, by unmuting yourself. All right, go ahead. Somebody who says true, Zainab, no, okay, maybe somebody who's saying false. Would you like to explain? Yeah, go ahead, Zainab. Well, because when day of judgment happens, our mm -hmm. bodies come out of the grave and then our souls, when we die, our souls go up to the sky. And when day of judgment comes, your soul goes back into your body. Mm, perfect. So that is awesome. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. This is actually false. The, tr the correct answer is false. The answer is our bodies are going to be recreated by Allah on the day of judgment because they would have rotted away. It's been hundreds of years perhaps. Right, but our soul, which has been, which was taken and uh, goes to a place called the Eliyin or the place called Sijin, that place, that's where the souls are held until the day of judgment, and thus on the day of judgment, when the body is recreated, the souls are rejoined with the bodies, and that is we will be there in body and spirit, both of us, like it'll be either nufusu zuwijat, like the ayah says the soul and the body is joined together, okay? So that's a quick 
rapid fire, warmer brown, mashallah, you guys did awesome. Now, Adam alayhi salam, we had done, uh, we've spoken about this before that he was uh, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a father or a mother. Isn't that right? And he is an exceptional creation in this regard that he was um, create, uh, he was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a parent. Okay? Uh, all of us have parents, correct? Yes. yes. Alhamdulillah. Now, uh, How do we explain or how do we understand that Adam alayhi salam could be brought into existence without a, a parent? How do we understand this? Okay, well, let's take a look at a couple of things here. Let me, let me, if people disagree that he, he didn't have a parent, like people disagree with that or? Is it, no? Okay, great. So, look at this. How do we understand this topic or this concept logically? This is an important consideration. Now, uh, excellent Zainab, he wouldn't be first if he had parents. Okay. Now, here is a, a very interesting passage. I'm going to read this to you. This is from a person who, uh, this is an, an article written by somebody, and it's a good article. I'm going to read a, a part of it to you. I'm going to add somebody else to read with me as well afterwards. Okay, I'm going to read the first part. All right, here, here, here is how it goes. Modern cosmology asks us to believe that the entire universe, with its, all its complexities and all its many physical laws and constants in outrageously perfect harmony, literally come out of nothing. The Big Bang. How many of you heard, have heard of the Big Bang? Me. So, yes, sir. Yeah, I have. Me. Is it official? I'm sorry, what? There's a TV show about it, isn't it? Uh, no, there's a TV show as well. Not the TV show. I'm referring to the theory and physics there. <laughs> um, okay, so the Big Bang, not the TV show, of course, is uh, a theory in physics. Okay, And this is the dominant theory that all of everything in existence came from one incident. It started from one incident called the Big Bang. And that Big Bang then uh, resulted in uh, the molecules and atoms and all the other stuff that's there drifting apart, drifting apart. And as it drifted apart, it would collide and would become into different uh, planets and different uh, objects. And then as it kept drifting apart, things would collide into it and it would get bigger or get smaller. And then through gravity, it will start having uh, a gravitational pull and then you will have uh, stuff orbiting it. All of that, and I mean, I'm being very, very uh, loose with my explanation of it, but it, that is the theory of the Big Bang. It actually has uh, quite a bit of a, a precedence uh, in physics. Like they say, you know, like if you observe how uh, the stars are, it seems like everything is moving far away. Like everything is just moving away. So if you were, if everything is moving away, then there must have been a point where everything is together in one, right? Yes or no? And that together in one, however many billions of years ago that was, was the Big Bang. So that's the summary of what the theory is. That's what we're taught in school. Okay. Uh, Marwa, you have a question? I appreciate you uh, raising your hand. And I, uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand uh, and then say uh, what you have to say, inshallah. Marwa, go ahead. So I've heard the opinion that um, Islam doesn't necessarily disagree with the Big Bang and that um, there's an ayah in the Quran that talks about like the skies and the earth, or I'm not sure, but like, like a big explosion or a big merge happening. Yeah, so uh, I, I, we're not an excellent point, Marwa. I'll actually show you that, Aya. We actually, um, a, a theory that's in physics or in chemistry or biology, like we don't have an opinion on it Islamically if it doesn't contradict with our, uh, with our understanding from the Quran and from the authentic hadith. You with me? Uh, so the idea of the Big Bang doesn't actually contradict with our theology, okay? 
uh, it is actually quite possible. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the earth. However, I would disagree with somebody who uh, proposes that uh, the Quran spoke about that. Uh, and I would disagree, even though it would be convenient for us to frame the ayah as such. Hmm? There is the ayah, ayah number 30. أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَ رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا do, do the, uh, Those who deny the truth not see that the heavens and the earth, heavens here refers to the skies, and the earth were joined together and then we uh, split them asunder. We, basically they were all mishmashed together and then we split them. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ And we made every living thing out of water uh, will they not still believe? Okay. So this is uh, the thing, but the, how do we understand uh, what an Arabic word means in the Quran? Hmm? How do we understand what this word ratqan means? Join. Fafataqnahuma. What does this word mean? Any ideas? How do we, this is a theoretical question, but any way well, you know how we the words in Arabic of the Quran, how do we know what they mean? Any thoughts? Anybody has their hands? Oh, Muhyiddin has his hand, right? Do you have, do you have an answer to that, Muhyiddin? Or somebody else has an answer to that? Arabic language and the root of the word. Thank you, Marwa. That's very nice. Uh, so what Arabic language specifically are you referring to, Marwa? The Arabic language, uh, the translation... Context of the phrase, okay, tafsir, okay, very good. Uh, here is, I'll tell you the answer. Google Translate, no, <laughs> definitely not Google Translate, okay. I'll tell you what, the uh, Arabic of the time of the Prophet Wasallam, that is the Arabic that the Quran was revealed in, correct? Yes or no? Do you agree with that? The Arabic of the time of the Prophet is what the Quran was revealed in. Yes? Okay. So to understand what is a word intending, or what is the intention behind a word in the Quran, we have to ask, what did the people at the time of the Prophet understand their word to be? Hmm? And if we ask that question about this ayah, the understanding that we get from them is that they are talking about the idea of the sky raining, uh, or, you know, the idea of rain from the clouds, not to, of the idea of a big bang, okay? Now, that's not to say that it's not possible or it's not true or the theory is this or that. It's not even to say that Allah mentions it or not mentions it. That's not, none of those are, we can't actually comment on any of that. What we can say for a fact is that theory doesn't contradict with our understanding of the Quran. And number two, the Quran explicitly does not speak about it. Okay? And we have to be careful. We cannot uh, add things or read into Quran things that we would like the Quran to have. We will, you should actually let the Quran speak for itself. Does that answer your question, Marwa? Perfect. Uh, Mohyuddin, what is your question? Uh, my question is that um, the question Marwa asked. Mm. You said that um, you would not like, would not, you would not um, agree with the fact that uh, it says in the Quran. Mm. But then you just said that a few minutes, a few seconds ago. But, but then what about um, what about the theory about um, apes developing into humans? Yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay. okay. You wanna? We'll talk about all that, inshallah. Don't you worry. Okay. Yeah. Good question. All that thought for a sec. Yeah. All right, here is, uh, so this is what, uh, the, what we're taught to believe in physics. We're taught to believe in physics, that the entirety of the universe came from that one big bang. All right, would someone like to read from me this part? Uh, let me pick, who is that? It was me, May. Oh, May, okay. Go ahead, May, right from here. Um, more story? Okay. Um, how can one be so confident in this account of the formation of the entire universe, but have utmost skept skepticism for cons considerably less fantastic account of the formation of Homo sapiens or any other species? 
Is man more complex than the entire universe? Okay, so the theory of the Big Bang is a uh, very, uh, this account, this theory is a, a very, uh, very improbable thing to happen, right? Very, very rare. In fact, it's literally like once in the history of humanity, this would happen, okay? How is it that we're expected by, by science to believe in something like that? But we are told that believing that Allah made humans and everybody else is far more illogical. That's the question he's asking. Okay. Uh, let's uh, keep reading. Uh, would you like to keep reading, uh, May? Where did you go? Where is she? May? Where did you go? Uh, all right, somebody else would like to read? Okay, Yumna perhaps? All right, Yumna, go ahead. Modern science asked us to accept that the entire universe came to be without physical precedent. Then why by science's own lights is it so inconceivable out of hand for a single species or even organisms generally to appear without physical precedent? Mm, what's precedence? Do you know what precedent or precedence means? Mm. It, it means something that's there before right? An example before. So we're asked by physics, this is the dominant theory of physics, that everything we believe in or everything around us, it came without a physical precedence before it, meaning there was nothing before it physically, and then it came into existence. That's what we're taught to believe. If you study physics in, uh, in high school and then university, that's the dominant theory uh, that we're taught. Okay, there's other theories as well. Then the question is, if that is something we assume to be true, why cannot we assume that a single species, right, a, like humans or other organisms, why can't they just appear out of physical precedence? Remember, I told you, we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam on the earth or in heaven. Where, where, where do we believe Adam al was made? On the earth or in heaven? In heaven. In heaven. We believe he was made in heaven, right? Uh, and there is some things about Adam al salam, or in fact, there's things about human beings that set us apart from the rest of Allah's creation, from the rest of whatever exists in the world. Okay? For example, our ability to communicate. Now, we know animals communicate. The Quran speaks about a you know, ant communicating or a honeybee communicating with other honeybees. That's all there. But the way we communicate is for us, communication isn't just basic information. Do this, don't do that. For us, communication is a way of life. We have poetry, we have prose, we have art, we have, you know, we write books, we take information and we, uh, you know, pass it on civilization after civilization, generation after generation. Right? That is a uniquely human trait. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right? There's something very special about the fact that the humans can do this. Right? And there's certain things that we have with like the ability to acquire knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you could learn really whatever it is you need to learn. Whatever it is that you set your mind to learn, you can learn it. It's not like it's impossible. It's impossible for me to swim for a kilometer, okay? It's impossible. A fish can do that, I can't do that, okay? Humans can't do that. But I can learn whatever it is I put my mind to, you see? And that's a un very unique human trait. And that is actually something that the difference between humans and other species, it's very stark, okay? And when we spoke about Mahdi's question about evolution, the theory of evolution, one of the biggest problems right now with it is that it can't explain how humans are so different than the other species if everybody came from the same single cell organism. How could one species be so vastly different in the way they speak, in the way they create civilization, in the way they pass knowledge, in the way they acquire knowledge? How could they be so vastly different? There's actually a major flaw and a major problem with that theory currently. So now we're asked, you know, uh, why can't we believe that? And the answer is we definitely can believe that. Just like we can believe 
that all of the ex creation came into being with a bang, we can also believe, like literally appeared out of nothing, we can also believe Allah can make Adam alayhi salam out of nothing. In fact, he made him out of a handful of dirt. Hmm? Who at the end today? Don't worry. Uh, he made him out of a handful of dirt and uh, and since he was made in heaven and then sent to the earth, he brought heavenly treats on the earth. Are you with me, people? All right. Uh, let's continue reading. I'm going to ask someone to finish off this last passage for us. Inshallah. Pretty sure, but now we have to listen. All right. Let's see. Who is the person who like to read uh, the last part for me? Mohideen? No. Or Alishba? Or let's have Alishba read a little bit and read in a little bit. Okay, go ahead, Alishba. From After All? Uh, from After All, yes. After All, science acknowledges within its overall ontology the existence of at least one bang. Without, wouldn't a truly scientific mind wonder whether such bangs occur in other contexts? Shouldn't the nature of bangs be a subject of wide scientific inquiry with profound implications for all scientific sub-disciplines? Mm, all right, Mohideen, the last paragraph. Thank you very much, Alishba. You're welcome. In sum? Oh, in sum, here is a uh, co-clination attempt. Yeah, attempts. Move, move the mic away from your from your mouth. Speak normally. That makes the Quranic narrative and its underlying ontological and uh, epistemological. Epistemological um, precedents. Precedent, seriously. Effort in affirming science, science by proving, providing meaningful, meaningful application about the physical world. Thank you, Mohideen. So, what is this uh, person, the guy who wrote the article? His name is Daniel. Uh, he wrote this article. He, his last name is uh, uh, Hakika Joe. Uh, you can Google him. I don't endorse everything this person writes, but this is actually a very good article that he wrote. Uh, and this is about, here is the crux of the argument. The crux of the argument is, if you can believe the, in the Big Bang, everything just came out of a bang. We can believe that the creation of Adam was also a bang like the Big Bang. Hmm? If you can believe that the universe can come from essentially nothing or very small amount of matter, we could also believe that an entire species, in fact, forget a species is a very small part of the universe, right? Just one species out of the entire universe, we can definitely believe came from a handful of dirt that Allah uh, grabbed and created from that, the originator of that species. You see, that's his argument. And it makes, in my opinion, a lot of sense. Uh, Allahu Alam. Okay, his name is, his name is Daniel... Happy God, happy God, Joe. That's how he spells it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, are we going to do another Kahoot? Yes, Fatima, I answered that question. We're going to do the Kahoot at the end today. Okay? So that is uh, the article. Uh, any questions about this article? How we understand Adam alayhi salam uh, being brought into existence without a mother or father. We understand this in our theology, in our belief. But now I hope you also understand it logically. Hmm? Does it make sense to you people? Yes or no? Does it make sense? I know this is deep and this is like, you know, yes. information yeah. that's processing and whatnot, but questions or comments? Yes. All right. Yes. Let, let us move on. Thank you very much. I appreciate your participation. All right. The, let's go back to the story of Adam. Hmm? Shall we? Uh, after this creation of Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa says, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَا أُولَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Now there's a little twist in the tale. Not only does Allah want to show Adam alayhi salam something, Allah wants to teach Adam alayhi salam something, but He also wants to teach the angels something uh, 
he taught the Adam, who uh, he taught Adam, uh, the, all the names. He taught Adam what? All the names, names, all of them. And then he set them before the angels and said, "Tell me the names of these, if you are truthful." Uh, what is the names of all of these things? What does Allah refer to when He says uh, the names of all things? Hmm? Allah teaches Adam the names of all things. Okay? Or the all the names. Okay? There's some discussion about what that is okay mashallah you guys are you know what are these names these objects and what are these names right that's the question okay so you're saying all prophets i'm assuming zainab you mean prophets all right uh creatures hmm? creatures in the universe excellent what else uh all things on earth okay things on earth uh, <laughs> angels, okay, perhaps very good. Uh, so these are all good answers. I, I really like these answers. That uh, everything in heaven, everything in heaven, perhaps. Okay, names of Allah, everything in heaven, names of Allah. Good, good suggestions. Really good. Everything on earth, right? Here is the reality. We actually don't know what these objects are we actually we actually don't know what these objects are but what we do know is uh that there's certain there's actually quite a few things on earth that share the origin within between languages between languages the origin of the word is the same okay so for example the word from mother okay um in arabic in urdu you know ammi <laughs> right in hebrew in many other languages there is the the letter meme or the m sound in it hmm? and this is actually quite a universal idea you find this across languages, across many, many languages. Certain, certain uh, names or objects have universal, uh, uh, universal um, names, right? It's like uh, there, there's a common, like there's a commonality between all of them. Uh, the uh, the word for yad. I was reading this article actually about how the word yad has, uh, it, it appears in the same way, the same, yad is hand by the way, in, in all the languages uh, that are called Semitic languages and uh, offshoots of Semitic languages, okay? Uh, that's actually the vast majority of the world's languages. Uh, the word yad is hand has almost the same letters, uh, in those languages in one way or shape or form or the other uh, so we don't know what these objects are okay uh, but what we know is perhaps the names of uh, perhaps these universally common uh, origins of many words perhaps that is what Adam was taught. Right? Now, languages, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says, languages are from Him. Okay? The diversity of your languages is a sign of Allah. Hmm? Meaning, Allah actually, uh, this is not like one language is better than the other language. We believe all languages are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah chose certain languages, like He chose Hebrew and Aramaic and Arabic to reveal revelation in. And He also chose other languages to reveal revelation in them as well. But languages by themselves are, uh, we attribute them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now there is a very strong possibility 
that Adam alayhi salam, the names he was taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of these objects, those are the names that became like the, the universal origins for all the languages that came afterwards. Hmm? And that is perhaps uh, what Allah is referring to when he says the names of all of them. All right. Now I'm going to actually go on and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something uh, very interesting to the angels. He says, uh, sorry, I will ask that question in a little bit. Is that okay? Ask me that question in a little bit. Let me finish this point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam that you, uh, here are objects and here are the names of these objects. Learn them. Adam and Salam learned them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the angels, tell me the names of these things if you know. Hmm? What does the angels respond? The angels respond by saying, They say, glory be to you. We have no knowledge except whatever you have taught us. We have absolutely no knowledge ourselves. Whatever you have taught us, O oh Allah, we know. Okay? And this is a lesson for us. Humility is to not pretend to know something that you don't. Okay? Uh, somebody who pretends to know something that they don't actually know, that is a very dangerous, uh, that's a very dangerous quality. That's not actually a good thing. Uh, somebody who pretends to know something that they actually don't, you could say this person is, is that, is that person like lying about themselves? Would you agree with that? Yes or no, right? It's kind of like a, a lie, right? You're, you're pretending to be something you're not. Isn't that a lie? Uh, so it's a very, uh, it's very important that humility, like true humility is, if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't pretend. You just say, I don't know. Is there any shame? Let me ask you a question. Is there any shame in not knowing something? Like saying, I don't know. And saying, like, I don't know. Is there any shame in that? What do you think, people? Yes or no? Mm, no. No. Okay, if you say no, then why? Mm. Why do you say that, Ibrahim? Because maybe they've never heard of it or something. Perfect. Maybe they've never heard of it. That's a good point, right? And the good thing is that at least you didn't pretend, right? Are you with me? It's, there's no shame. Yeah. Don't mute. What about uh, some of you who say it's a chance for you to grow and learn about it? Excellent point. Uh, it's like admitting defeat for some people. Excellent, Marwa. Very good point. Some people think that it's like, you know, you have defeated or you admit defeat. And that's not true. Uh, I would say saying, I don't know. And I don't, I wouldn't accept this answer. If someone said to me, if I asked them, I asked them in school, by the way, where is your book? Where is your textbook? And if someone says, I don't know, I tell them, I don't accept that answer. Because it's your responsibility to know where your book is. Correct? Are you with me, people? It's not your responsibility? You don't agree with that? Yeah. It is your responsibility. Right? Excellent. Well done, Mahideen. Right? So it, it's, it's not... The question is asked about something that you should know, something that you knew, and then you're like, hey, I don't know where that is. I don't accept that as an answer. But if I ask you a question that you genuinely don't know the answer to, hmm, that is something you shouldn't say, uh, yeah, I know this, or make up something, because that kind of uh, pretentiousness is actually not very good. Uh, do you know in interviews, because I, I would conduct interviews from time to time, uh, if a person is uh, pretending to know something that they don't know, it's very easy to spot it. Hmm? It's very easy to s tell it right away. Okay, like in a job interview. So if I ask somebody, I remember I was doing this interview, 
uh, for somebody who uh, it was it was for an online store, right? Running an online store. So I asked like a question about uh, something that's very very basic in like online uh, shopping and whatnot. And I was like, hey, how would you do that? And this person, instead of saying, you know, I have never actually done this, uh, they started making up a whole bunch of things. And immediately, and I was doing the interview over like uh, Skype, you know, Skype. So immediately I, um, I disqualified that person in my, uh, in my notebook. And I said, you know what, uh, this person, I'm not even going to like uh, listen to the rest of their answers. I don't even care what they have to say anymore. Right. Because they're just flat out making up stuff in a job interview. How can I trust them when I ask them to do something at work? Uh, like I don't have any trust in this person. Hmm? Some people would want to get attention. Uh, so they want to know everything. It's fine to want to know everything, right? It's fine to want to learn, but to pretend to know, hmm, is that a good thing? To pretend to know, is that a good thing? That's ego, right? And I would, I'm glad that you're saying that's not a good thing at all. Right? And I give you the example of this interviewer. It's just like lying, in fact. Perfect. Okay. So the angels have the utmost humility. They say, we don't know Allah. But then Allah says to Adam, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئْهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ uh, can I have somebody read the translation for me? Raise your hand if you like to. Like a hand on the... Alright, we have Marwa. Uh, so, Mohidin, you already did this. Let me ask Marwa. Then he said, Oh, Adam, Allah told them their names. Mm. When Adam had told them, na- had told them, had told them the names, mm. God said to the angels, Did I not say to you, I know the secrets of the heavens and of the earth, and I know what you reveal and what you reveal. Perfect. Now, Allah displays these objects uh, to the angels. The angels are like, we don't know what these objects are. Then Allah says to Adam, hey, Adam, you tell them the names of these things. And Adam then is able to tell, Allah, uh, tell the angels what this object means and what that object means and what its name is. Okay. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says to the angels, did I not tell you that I know something that you don't? Hmm? I know something that you don't. Uh, here is what Allah was doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was teaching through examples. Okay? He could have told the angels, you know, humans, one of the things that makes them special is they will be able to learn and acquire knowledge. Okay? They will be able to acquire knowledge, pass it on, uh, teach it, learn it, teach it. And generation after generation, that thing will become bigger and bigger and better and better. Okay, uh, but instead of telling this difficult thing to the angels, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala showed them the example. They're like, see, that's what a human being can do. He can learn and he can retain, and that actually speaks to human excellence. Th- something that's really amazing about us as human beings. Something that, as a good Muslim, we should be, which is. Our excellence is very closely linked to the idea of us being able to learn and for us to be able to teach. Okay? And this is something in Islam, so learning things about Islam, uh, Quran, but also learning whatever is outside of the Quran. Right? The names that Allah taught Adam, the names of all things, was this only religious knowledge? It wasn't, right? It was all types of knowledge, including religious knowledge. You see? So for us, excellence means learning our religion really well. It means learning uh, like, uh, or doing really well in school. excelling being really good at what you have learned being a master in it uh, achieving like high uh, high achievements in whatever subject you like whatever it is that you're focusing on in school in university uh, being an expert being 
and expert. That is uh, human excellence. That's where actually we're taught to be. That's who Adam al -Islam was. Excellence, right? Adam al -Islam showed an example of human excellence. Okay? The Prophet told us that uh, in Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it that إِذَا عَمِلَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَمَلًا أَنْ يُتْقِنَهُ Allah loves it when you do something that you do it you do it how so? you do it 100% hmm? that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it's a hadith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he loves it when we give our all to whatever it is that we're doing. Okay, what is the first ayah revealed in the Quran, people? Do you know? First ayah revealed. Not Alhamdulillah. It's actually Iqra bismi Rabbik alladhi khalaq. Read. Because read in the name of who created you. Exactly, right? So because our faith prioritizes this. It wants us to be educated in our religion and in all aspects of life. Hmm? You with me, people? So that is uh, an example of that. Then Allah says to the angels, He says, Fasajadu illa iblis. And here we get introduced to who? Which character? From the translation, tell me. Shaitan. Shaitan. Shaitan, but what's his name? Iblis. 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 This is our introduction to Iblis. The first time in the Quran, Allah mentions him. And we're going to talk about him today, inshallah. And we have a kahoot on Iblis. Don't you worry. Okay? Now, here is the thing. All right? Iblis, he refused. Abba, he refused. Was Takbara, he acted proudly. And he was an unbeliever. Allah said to the angels, bow down before Adam. This is not actually bowing down uh, in the way of like prostrating. This is actually bowing down in the way of showing. Okay? It's like if you are making sajda towards the Kaaba. Right? Do you know what the Kaaba is? Yep. Yeah. Right? If you make sajda, let me ask you this question. If you make sajda to the Kaaba and you are actually in like the in al haram, in the masjid al haram, does this mean are you worshipping the Kaaba? Yes or no? Yes or no, people? No. Yes. Yes. No. You're worshiping the Kaaba? Is that what we do? No. No, 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 no. no. We don't worship. We worship God. No, we don't worship the Kaaba, right? We don't. We worship Allah. We worship the person who lives in the Kaaba. Lives in the Kaaba? There's no person who lives in the Kaaba, and we don't no, worship. No, not the person. The <laughs> Allah. Allah. He, he. All the masjids are Allah's home, right? Correct. Every mosque is Allah's home. So Kaaba is a, a home for Allah. Correct. So we worship yeah. Allah. So we worship Allah, but see, our sajda to the Kaaba is symbolic, right? It's not to the Kaaba. It is a sajda to Allah. Are you with me? Yeah. But it is directed towards the? Kaaba. The Kaaba. Similarly, the sajda of the angels, our sajda is to Allah directed towards the Kaaba. Hmm? The sajda of the angels is to Allah or Adam? Allah. Allah, but directed towards? Adam. Towards Adam. Okay, now we actually don't believe Allah lives in the Kaaba or Allah is actually part of the world. Allah is above the world. Okay, world, the time and space cannot contain Allah. Allah is above 
uh, his creation. Hmm? Uh, but here is the interesting thing here, right? The angels prostrating to Adam is just like uh, us prostrating towards the Kaaba. Our sajda, that prostration is to Allah just like the angels sajda was to Allah. Except Iblis. Except Iblis. Hmm. He, Abba was Takbara. Was he an angel? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Iblis was an no. angel. How many people say yes? No. yes. no. He was a fallen no. angel. He was a uh, jinn. He was not an angel. Hmm. He was not. All right. Yes. Who, who, who says no? Yes? I did. I, I, some, someone said yes and sa said something interesting about it. it. Iblis is not an angel. Okay. He's a jinn. He's a jinn. He's a jinn, but somebody said something interesting. He's a jinn that lives in Jannah. Jinn that lives in. He was brought to. He was brought up uh, up with the angels by Allah, but he was never an angel. Okay, yeah. very good. I heard somebody say a fallen angel. Did somebody say that? Yes. Hmm. Who said that? Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Where did you learn that? Uh, he, where did you learn that from? I don't know. You mm. probably got that the Christian mythology, or like the Christian. Uh, that is actually the Christian belief. Well done, yeah. Ibrahim. That's actually the Christian belief that Iblis was a fallen angel. We it as Muslims not. don't believe that angels are fallen angels. We believe that the angels are servants of Allah. They worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't disobey Him. Hmm? Are you with me? We yes. actually don't believe that. We believe that Iblis was a jinn. And Iblis was actually a very good jinn. He was a very devoted jinn. Like he worshipped Allah subhanahu wa a lot. All right? And we believe that he uh, was the member of the, 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 the genus of jinn. That's what we call it as, right? But then he did something that caused Allah to expel him. And in fact... For Allah to uh, curse him until the end of time. Which is what he just did here. Abba, he refused. And not just refused because he was like, you know what, I'm tired. I am kind of like, you know, a little lazy. No, istakbara. He acted proudly. He actually thought he was better than Adam. And we'll see that tomorrow. Those ayat we'll study tomorrow, inshallah. When he says to Allah, Ana khayru minhu. I am better than him. I am better than him, O oh Allah. You made me uh, from fire, fire and you made him from sand. From no. dirt, from sand, right? So he actually, it's not just that he didn't accept what Allah said, it's not that he made a mistake, it's actually that he said, O oh Allah, you made a mistake. In choosing Adam over me. That's what he said. Hmm? He, Iblis, didn't just make a mistake. He said, You made a mistake, oh Allah. That's what he said. And that is the result, or that's what caused him to be kicked out of paradise. And for Allah's curse to be upon him. Okay, uh, are we uh, going to make mistakes as human beings? Yes. Yes, yes or no? Of yes. Yes. Of course, we are going to make a lot of mistakes. In fact, the Prophet some said, "Kullu ibn Adam Every human being, every child of Adam, makes a lot of mistakes. Okay. But the best of those who make mistakes are who? Those who learn from them. The best of those people, of these people, are the ones who learn and fix their mistakes. Right? The idea of repentance. Oh Allah, I'm sorry. This is a hadith of the Prophet in which he states this. Uh, if we make a mistake, does that mean we are like uh, doomed to hellfire? No. Yes or no, people? No. 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 
You have to say astaghfirullah. That's a big no. It's a big no. Okay? That's like also a, the no. difference between uh, Adam and Iblis. Uh, that's the difference between Adam and Iblis. Exactly. Who said that? Mahmoud. Mahmoud, mashallah, ahsant. We'll learn, we'll see this. Adam made a mistake. Iblis made a mistake. Iblis said, Allah, I wasn't wrong, you were wrong. When Adam made a mistake, he said, Allah, I was wrong. I am the one who made the mistake. And that is the attitude that we are expected to have. We're supposed yeah. to make mistakes, but we're expected to learn from our mistakes and we're supposed to fix them by making tawbah, by apologizing. That is what Allah Ta'ala, that's what makes a great human being. Hmm? Okay, let's look at the word. Let's talk about the devil today a little bit. All right, Iblis. He is a very interesting character, and then we'll conclude with the Kahoot. Iblis, the devil. All right, he is his name in Arabic actually means utter despair. That's what the name uh, of the devil means utter despair. From the word Mublis or Iblis, uh, he is named as such because. When he not just disobeyed Allah, but flat out uh, accused Allah of being wrong, that is when the curse of Allah fell on him. And when that happens, that is a person who is now in a state of utter despair. There is no hope for them in this point. Okay. Now, uh, well, we all, I always tell you we end at one forty-five. All right. Now, did he have a different name in, in heaven? Uh, Allah alam, probably he did. Okay, But we know him by the name Iblis only after he had disobeyed. Only after the curse of Allah had fallen on him. But we don't know what his, his name was before. All we know he was a devoted servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then when he said, Allah, you're wrong and I'm right. That is when Allah named him Iblis. Ya Iblis, O oh, Iblis, and that became the name, the name, the one who has, who, uh, who has no hope. Okay, now he is the member of the genus of jinn. Okay, uh, jinns and human beings. Here is a small Venn diagram for you. Okay, jinns and human beings don't interact that much. What I mean by that is, it's not that every day I have like a jinn buddy that I call and say, "Hey, how's it going? How are you guys?" What's, how are you guys dealing with Corona, right? That's not, that's not the relationship between us and jinns, okay? Uh, we know that there is a jinn that uh, whispers to us, okay? We know that there is, uh, you know, uh, the major devil, the head devil is known as Iblis, and then he has an army of minions, okay? But we... Uh, don't interact with jinns as much. The limited interaction that happens between jinn and human beings yeah. uh, generally comes under the uh, under the um, situation of what's called sihr. Anybody know what sihr means? Isn't it magic? Mm. Black magic. Black magic. Yes, and that is a very dangerous thing. That is when a human sells his soul to the devil. Okay, now that's a very interesting topic. We can talk about it some other time. But the point of this is that anything bad happens to you, it's not that there's a jinn in your room doing it. Okay, and anything that happens to you that is, you know, uh, like spooky or strange, it's not because there's some jinn out there manipulating things. No, this is we don't believe that. This is the, the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The interaction between humans and jinns is a little bit. Muhammad is asking, how do you sell your soul? Muhammad, don't worry about it right now. <laughs> and this has, selling a soul, by the way, this is not a joke. Okay? This is not a laughing matter. This is when a person says, you know what? I don't care if I go to the fire or hell. I'll accept going to the fire or hell. I just want right now this jinn to do something to this person. Okay? And that is the unfortunate and the tragic and the disgusting reality of sihr, black magic. 
We can talk about that a little bit later. Let me finish this point, please. Inshallah. Okay. Iblis is a member of jinns, and jinns are good and bad. Okay. There's good jinn and bad jinn. Do we have uh, in the Quran a mention of good jinns? Anybody know? No. Yes. Good jinns. Where are they mentioned in the Quran? Good jinns. Anybody know which surah? Suratul Jinn. Suratul Well done, Abdullah. Right, Abdullah, you answered. Was it you? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Suratul Jinn. What does it say? Say it has been revealed to me that a band of the jinn listened to the Quran and they said we have heard a really wonderful recital. Subhanallah. Right. These good jinn, the Prophet Sam was praying once. And they heard the Prophet some reading Quran and they were amazed. And they were so amazed that they said when the Prophet some stood up to pray, they pressed They pressed close to him in great number numbers, almost like tripping over each other, stifling him. Because they wanted to hear what he was saying. They wanted to see the Prophet praying. And they became so fascinated by what the Prophet had to say. They became Muslims. And then, subhanAllah, they went back to their jinn folks and said, you know what guys, you all should become Muslims too. Hmm? Ansitu. They said, be silent and listen. And when he was finished, they went back to the people to give them warning. They said, Oh, our people, we have heard a book which has been sent down after Moses, fulfilling the predictions existing in the previous scriptures, guiding to the truth and the straight path. Oh, people, believe. Respond to the one who calls you to God and believe in him, and he will forgive your sins and protect you from a painful punishment. SubhanAllah. These, there are good jinns, and these were good, an example, uh, multiple examples of good jinns. But there's also bad jinns. The bad jinns are known as shaytan, or the plural of that is shayateen. In English, Satan. And the head of these devils is, is who? Iblis. 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 Iblis actually is the head of these devils, because when he was expelled from heaven, as we'll see tomorrow, inshallah, he said to Allah, he said to Allah, Oh Allah, allow me to live to the end of time. Okay? And Allah gave him that special permission, that extraordinary opportunity or this extraordinary circumstance. Allah said, You can live to the end of time. Okay? Now, let's read this hadith and we. Uh, End uh, with this and then I'm going to go uh, to the Kahoot. Yes, I know, Fatima, there's only 10 minutes left. Okay, Jabir reported that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, Iblis places his throne upon water. Okay, some place in the earth uh, or a abandoned body of water, he places his throne upon the water. He then sends dispatches for creating dissension. Dissension meaning... You know, uh, problems between people. Okay, though the nearer to him in rank are those who are more notorious in creating dissension. Someone want, would like to read the rest of this for me. Let's see. Let me pick somebody randomly. Let me pick. Um, let me pick uh, Judy. All right, go ahead, Judy. From dissension. Uh, from one of or, them. Or from the nearer. Uh, one of them comes. From this part. Oh. One of them comes and says, I did so and so. He says, you have done nothing. Hmm. Okay. He says, you have done nothing. Oh, uh, uh, devil. Okay. Next. Continue reading, please, Judy. Then one amongst them comes and says, I did not spare so. And so until I sowed the seed of discord between a husband and a wife. Hmm. What do you think the uh, Iblis is going to say to that? You have done something. You've done something, right? In fact, the Satan, Iblis, goes near to him and says, What, Judy? You have done well. 
You have done well. Hmm? He in fact says you, in, in Arabic he says anta, you are the one who's done something. Anta, anta, you have really done something. You're the man, that's what he's trying to say. Because that is the role of the devil. His role is to create dissension. His role is to, uh, he refuses to bow before Adam. Uh, sorry, his, his role is to sow the seed of dissension among people. And that's the context that Allah sends him in. All right, let's go to uh, the Kahoot for today, inshallah. And this has some questions. Uh, Lucifer is the English, like the biblical version of it. Zainab, all these questions we're going to talk about tomorrow. Is that okay? If you don't mind. Hmm? Yes. All right. Uh, let us go to the Kahoot for today and end with that, inshallah. You guys have been a great audience. Alhamdulillah. Let me go to team mode here. All right. Oh, hold on. F11. There we go. Okay, people. Join in, please. Very good. Okay, beautiful. We have, I think, most people on already. I'm going to get started, inshallah. I'm not in yet. Not in yet? Okay. Alishpa, you have a question? No. Okay, yeah, you had raised your hand. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, wait, I'm, I'm not in yet. Okay. Go. <laughs> Mahdi, you're in? Yeah. Okay, good. Sarah, you're in? Yeah. All right. Is everybody in? Sure. I hope so. I think so. I think so? Okay. All right. Let's go. Definitely. All right. What does Iblis mean? The devil, Satan, utter despair. There's a third. There's a, this answer, I don't know. It's messing up. Ignore that answer. It means utter despair. That's what the word Iblis means. Who is he? Is He's the devil, right? But what it means is utter despair. Hmm? All right. Next question. Iblis was a, a jinn, an angel, a fallen angel, or a human? The correct answer is he's a jinn. He was not an angel. Definitely not a fallen angel. I just told you that, guys. How would you say that? <laughs> All right. Next question. Iblis was a highly devoted worshiper of Allah before his disobedience. True or false? And the answer is true. Great job, mashallah. Next question. 
Okay, next question is, uh, true or false, humans and jinns interact a lot. True or false? The answer is false. Like I told you, the interaction here, I mean, is like how humans interact with other humans. We don't have that kind of interaction with the jinn. Okay, very good. Next question. There are only bad jinns. True or false? The answer, of course, is false. Very well done. True or false? Uh, next question. The chief of the evil jinns, Shayateen, is... Oh, you actually pass out okay, no problem. Iblis, a human, no chief jinn. Iblis is the head of the devils. Okay. Iblis loves it when a devil sows dissent between a husband and a wife. True or false? The answer, of course, is true. Iblis loves it. That's one of the things that he is extremely happy about. Oh, man, close game. The reason why Iblis was cursed was he was arrogant. He made a mistake. He saw himself better than Adam. Perfect. He was arrogant. That's the correct answer. He saw, he saw himself to be better than Adam. He thought he was right. Uh, and Allah was wrong in choosing him uh, over Adam. Who's Gigi? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me let me allow you to unmute yourself. I want I want to know who's like the the top five here. Okay, who's Gigi? Uh, me, Marwa. Marwa. Okay, very good. And who is little Haji? <laughs> what? What kind of names? Who's that? Your Hadiya, okay, good. Just saying, you finished it. Oh, okay, who's Mo is the best? Because it's a closed game, it's Ibrahim. one question left. Ibrahim. Huh? Who's Mo the best? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, okay, Sana, okay, you have your own name, thank God for that. <laughs> and Ahmed. All right, Ahmed is there too. Okay, last question. Closed game. Elise did not blame Allah for his mistake. True oh, or right. false? He blamed him. I'm mistake. False, because he did blame him, so it's false. He blamed him. Mm, you can hear you, Ibrahim. <laughs> the answer is false. Correct, Ibrahim, and the rest who chose that answer. It is, he blamed Allah for his mistake. He said, oh Allah, you are the one who's wrong. You ch chose wrongly, not me. All right, third place, mashallah. Mo is the best. Mashallah. Number two, little Haji. Okay. <laughs> Number one is Gigi. Awesome. Mashallah. Runners up are Sana Bakri and Ahmed. All right. Mashallah. Great job, everybody. Jazakumullah khairan. I will see you all, inshallah, on um, tomorrow. Tomorrow, what we'll do is we're going to study a passage of the Quran where more about Iblis is spoken about. He says what he has to say and we'll talk uh, a lot more about uh, the nature of the devil and what we call the devil's deception. Okay, it should be very interesting. Inshallah. We'll talk about it tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you again for coming out. I'll see you all tomorrow. Same time. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Na alaikum